Well, we'll give you Valentine's Day off. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Maybe two hours. No, it's a building committee. Correct. Oh, it's the building committee. Relax, like, Jeff. Relax. Because if I'm using it, you need to know what it is. I'm with the start of Mark. Good evening and welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting on Wednesday, February 12th. Uh, and I call this meeting to order at 6.30. First order of business, uh, next order of business, I should say, is public comment. Uh, is there any public comment? Not at this time, okay. We'll move into a sizable <laughs> amount of, of correspondence that we have. I um, gave you the uh, the posting that we did for a um, part-time consulting service for economic development coordinator and we've got that as a agenda item so we'll get into that uh, at that time. Uh, the um, also included uh, for your perusal the uh, the five-year uh, model that the Board of Finance develops and just gave you that information. Did that always have the input cells or is that something new? Uh, the uh, short answer is yes. The longer answer is the uh, for a while there um, they did not have folks that you know really were um, that savvy with it, and so they didn't use it. So, uh, but it was always available for it was always for years. It's been a model that they can they can use. Okay. And sometimes utilized and sometimes not utilized. It seems like it's going to be highly utilized yes. this time, which is great. Uh, the uh, John, I'm going to do you what you're doing. Yeah. I'm going to do because yeah, I, I got too many missed. things I hear. Uh, January uh, general government financials. Uh, basically, uh, we're trending slightly uh, under budget at this point. Um, so overall expenses are favorable to budget. Data services is off $3,800, which is continuing to shrink from uh, what it was. Police has expanded to $18,000, uh, unfavorable to budget. Um, 12000 of that is the immediate result from the contract of the, uh, the uniform payment being paid uh, not in the course of the year but uh, in one lump sum and then uh, they uh, it was a gross growth uh, wage increase of two percent but there was a thousand dollar increase in the base so that that's twelve thousand well eleven thousand seven hundred of the eighteen thousand right there um, fire marshal slightly over at five hundred uh, uh, public Works is unfavorable uh, by 13, and, and 10 of that is in labor, um, primarily storms. Even though there hasn't been a lot of snow or anything, uh, certainly there's been a lot of rain uh, and sleet and snow, like it's going to be this this evening. And so they have to go out and treat. Uh, and the RCC line, uh, well, I'm sorry, the Social Security line is... Uh, is trending uh, about twenty. Hey, Paul, uh, about twenty-seven hundred, uh, uh, about twenty-seven hundred dollars over, uh, and we'll fix that in the upcoming budget with the formula. Uh, RCC lines were trending about ten thousand dollars over. Uh, I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars. The uh, permit fees look like they're going to come in in the budget, and the tipping charge is at least five thousand uh, dollars ahead of trend. So we're in good shape, but we do have some things that we need to watch. The uh, next uh, is I just put in uh, uh, for uh, so you'd be aware of it in case you didn't uh, see it on the news. Uh, there was a. Uh, a Neglected animals that were seized from a Suffield farm in January, and the Suffield Police Department Animal Control Division and the Connecticut Department of Agriculture uh, investigated a uh, number of cattle, uh, dogs, and poultry at several locations, including one location uh, on the line in East Grand. So that's why I brought it up, because it did affect us. The, um, just to give an update on the uh, Spoonville stop sign, uh, the, uh, this is actually not uh, regarding uh, the temporary or not prod, uh, stop sign that, that we've uh, put up. It's regarding a, another a resident was concerned about the Spoonville and Christmas tree lane area 
and so she's concerned about bus stops, and walker safety, and people on, uh, from coming from Miller and to spice this at a high rate of speed. Uh, Trooper Caps will uh, download the uh, information at the end of Janu uh, end of February or early March, and then we'll have that as a topic at a future meeting. This is the one that we put up. Uh Two or three months ago, uh, this uh, the, the, what I just referred to is, but what right. uh, the resident refers to is a uh, is a different section that she was uh, looking for some sort of, of police action or a stop sign. So I think we've got enough stop signs on that road. I uh, I, I don't disagree. Uh, uh, but anyways, I, I just wanted to make you aware of what the residents were thinking and looking at. Uh, Grandbrook Park, uh, the uh, ball field, we, can, we can't understand what happened about a year ago. The uh, ball field, uh, it, there's an awful lot of water and everything, and it really came up with a third of the outfield. Uh, and, you know, we did all sorts of work on the hill and, you know, see if there was a, you know abandoned well or something where that was spewing water and all those sorts of things. We just think the water flow has changed. Anyways, uh, at this point, um, the uh, field uh, never did dry out and it's not going to be able to be used uh, for as a ball field. So we've got the ball field up at, uh, at the um, East Granby Farms. Uh, but anyways, the, uh, we, so we had the town engineer and DPW get involved to see if there's anything we can do to save the field down there. Uh, doesn't appear that that's likely because we wouldn't be able to fill in because it's the floodplain and it, we'd have to get deep and the mm -hmm. uh, Corps of Engineers, Army Engineers involved. Uh, because uh, there's, you know, the park is a flood zone. Um, and then also, uh, you know, there's space. We developed uh, a, a flag football field uh, on the other side of where the, so if you're, you're coming down the road and you take a right, you see the baseball field. If you look to the left, it's where the touch football field is and, and some more parking. We looked at that to see if that was something that we could do. And by the way, Little League has been involved in these conversations because they'll bring some money to the table. Uh, and uh, it probably looks like that's not going to work. One of the things that, uh, that Little League has, has started to discuss is put two small fields over at All Grove for the younger kids. And as a result of this and the conversation that we had last week, um, Little League may be interested in just putting one regular field over at All Grove. And if that's what happens, then... Uh, and if we upgrade the middle school practice softball field, uh, that might take care of some of the problems that are caused with the absence of Grandbrook. So there's more to come on that, but uh, uh, at this point, I uh, wanted to bring in up to speed. I'm just kind of wondering why we're not really moving all the play fields or whatever to East Granby Farms, because there's an awful lot of land there, and that's pretty much what it was intended for. Right. So and, and parking there, I think that would be the perfect place for it. Right. They, we, uh, we need to develop, it's always been part of the, f I agree, short term. I mean, instead of spending money on setting up a field at All Grove, let's just well, move it over to the park. And it's, well, it's more complicated than that. Uh, uh, you, you'd have to do parking and lighting and everything, which is fine. Which we already um, have. No, you, you'd have to do additional where the setup is, and they would do phase two of East Granby Farms. And by doing phase two of East Granby Farms, uh, it would, you know, they'd apply uh, for a steep grant. So that's something that you know, certainly, I, I absolutely agree, something that, that needs to be done and is part of the plan. But in the meantime, uh, there, there is a need for a ball field, and it's going to be more complicated to get a steep grant together and to get that long-term solution done. But they are looking to do phase two up at the East Granby Farms. That was going to be a soccer field and a ball field. Now I think they're looking at two ball fields, but more to come on that. The uh, grand list, uh, it was uh, $128,000 uh, less than, than last year, uh, kind of a break even, but down decimal point oh two, six hundred and seven million four hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars worth of grand list values last year, and uh, in the current year, the October nineteen, October two thousand nineteen, uh, it was six hundred and seven thousand two hundred and ninety seven. 
uh, as uh, as Mrs. Brown, the assessor, mentioned at the board of finance meeting, uh, there was two and a half million dollars worth of value lost on the grand list because of StubHub and the auto auction. And um, the, uh, she also spoke to the large truck exemption uh, that's uh, mandated by the state that makes the truck exempt from property to, or, or personal tax. And also she discussed the manufacturer's exemption and the Bradley development zone. This, this, is, this is really alarming. We gotta do something about this. It's like we've created a position to try to bring in economic development and it seems like it's done absolutely nothing. You know, we're, we need to do something different. I mean, we gotta have someone in town that actually does it. We got a director of community development. I think he should be doing a little bit more to try to help. Well, we've, we've got that as an agenda item, so I hold know that, but that's, that's, it's not hold enough. Those, hold, no, hold those thoughts and then we'll, we'll discuss it, you know, at the agenda item, which is 6B or whatever it is, 6, uh, 6A. Right. Okay, uh, the, I gave you the information uh, regarding uh, the governor's proposed state budget uh, adjustments and uh, at this point it looks like uh, about $294,000 more than what the Board of Finance used in their calculations. Uh, that all depends on the uh, governor and the legislature coming up with a bonding package, uh, so it remains to be seen. But it, it does seem to be a more favorable year, correct? I mean, everything correct. I'm hearing is, correct. It shouldn't. we shouldn't be in the nail-biter situation like we've been for the last few years. Agreed. I mean, I wouldn't count on it, because this is just the governor's, and his, he's banking on tolls, so that's where he's getting all his money from, so. The um, and you know then you know are they going to vote on tolls next week or aren't they and were they going to do it last month and the month before? Uh, but sooner or later they've got to address the bonding package uh, because that is holding up uh, um, town aid road funds and other bonded funds. Uh, the uh, uh, We've, uh, so it remains to be seen. Uh, also, Stop and Shop uh, in March is uh, highlighting in the Granby store the uh, East Granby Youth Services for, uh, they've got what they call is a uh, community bag program and where uh, if you buy the bag for $2.50 at the uh, Stop and Shop store in Granby, East Granby Youth Services will receive a dollar donation for each bag, so. Uh, Probably not an awful lot of bags that are sold, but uh, certainly appreciated uh, the efforts from Stop and Shop. And if residents want to support a, a youth services in town and they need a recycling bag, they should do so. Uh, okay, the uh, we've got uh, Comptroller uh, Limbo's uh, report uh, for the month of February that he always sends out the first week of, month of February, uh, first week of the month, uh, and the, the projects are uh, 58 million dollar deficit is what he projects rather for fiscal year 2020 at this point. Um, a lot of, as always, a lot of data and information. Interesting. Received a, a letter from the, an email from John Walsh from Aquarian Water uh, regarding uh, P, PFAS uh, and uh, that's the firefighting foam that uh, there's been in, in the news twice in the last six months. Um, and uh, in, in recognition of the growing concern about PFAS, Aquarian voluntarily began a PFAS testing program in 2019 for all the public water systems that they manage in Connecticut. And uh, I know the state is monitoring those two. <coughs> Uh, also put in the package that uh, the notice for the full-time building official that uh, we uh, have uh, put in the paper and on websites and uh, the last day to apply for that is Thursday at 4 p.m. and we have gotten several applications. <laughs> okay. 
and uh, I've got a resident who was very complimentary of Officer Loveland, uh, who uh, the family was going through a uh, situation where they, they lost, uh, uh, the, his, in this case, the gentleman's uh, wife. Uh, her father passed away, and he, was, he and the family were just so impressed with how Officer Loveland uh, handled it, uh, and I uh, just wanted to uh, let you know about that and also uh, publicly give Officer uh, Loveland some recognition for doing a great That's job. Very nice. Yeah. And we, um, next is uh, the U.S. Census Bureau. This is going to be the census in 2020. And uh, they're starting some of the things. They had us look at the uh, boundary validation program, and you know you, we we checked all our legal boundaries on the map, and they've got us exactly the way we should be. So I emailed them back and said we're ready to be counted. The uh, Connecticut prescription card uh, that periodically we talk about, just so that people are aware that the card's there. It's like a an affinity card where you, uh, if something's not covered for primarily for uh, by a health insurance claim, uh, you can use this card and get 40 to 50 percent off uh, the items or whatever the the amount is. This past year in 2019, <coughs> there was 18 claims, uh, uh, 20, uh, 25. Uh, uh, well, I should say there was 18 cards that were used, 25 different claims, uh, for a uh, for a cost of $1,227. Um, the price savings uh, with the card was $509, or 29%. And since program to date, uh, it's actually 48%. And the Lower Farmington River and Salmon Brook Wild and Scenic Committee. Um, we uh, have appointed Mike Craman. Uh, we did that in 2019. This is a letter just saying that they're getting things going. And uh, Bob Pasquitz might have an interest as an alternate. So Mike was going to talk to Bob because uh, Bob did uh, express an interest. So Mike is our representative. This is something that they keep saying that we endorsed. We we never endorsed this. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's uh, it's. I brought it up to them in person when when they were here. I brought it up again when I uh, met with Mike. Uh, it's a cookie cutter letter. Mm -hmm. The um, we got a thank you from McLean uh, because we uh, had a budget item for five hundred dollars. Uh, since we get uh, some assistance for Meals on Wheels um, from McLean, and uh, the, uh, uh, the it's a low income, uh, they said the majority of our recipients are in low income brackets and no one has ever denied service uh, due to an inability to pay, and any fundraising they do is helpful and they appreciated our small but good contribution of $500. Uh, towards that vein, the community renewal team, uh, they uh, sent a report, uh, if you go to page two, it shows the performance measures in your community. Uh, so th this is the folks that they assisted in East Granby. Uh, for elder services, they assisted two individuals and they say that the estimated value of their services was $3,300. Um, and they assisted with energy and weatherization uh, for 128 individuals or 57 families. Uh, they value that at 40, almost $43,000. Um, mental health and substance abuse, uh, they assisted four families with that for an estimated value of $5,400. Um, they, they've assisted four, uh, 62 uh, families for about a value of $51,000. Uh, they're bringing to our attention what it is that they do in the community and uh, we don't make any contribution to them but we certainly appreciate the help that they do and they work with our social services. There will be a meeting of the Board of Assessment Appeals. Uh, we'll meet on March 10th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
uh, for the purpose of hearing appeals from individuals or organizations that are claimed to be aggrieved by the actions of the town assessor on the 2019 brand list. Uh, the appeals are held by appointment only. Forms must be submitted in writing and are available from the assessor's office. Form must be in the assessor's office by the close of business, 4 p.m. on February 20th. Uh, the, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please call the uh, assessor's office at 860-653-2852 if you want a hearing on your assessment. We uh, talked about the center uh, cemetery, which the volunteer group is expanding, and so I met with, uh, based on the feedback that we got, I met with the... Uh, with the president of the Historical Society, and uh, I, you know, I put her at ease. I said, "We're not looking for you to take it over. We're not looking for the Historical Society to to take care of the maintenance. Uh, we are more you know, DPW will do that. We're more interested in you know how can we keep the history alive? It's 200 some odd years old, uh, and how about developing a narrative or activities about the cemetery?" And uh, she uh, was willing uh, and receptive to the idea, um, said that in the past they've done things. I said, well, we'd be looking for something a little bit more consistent. And she's going to talk to the Historical Society Board of Directors about publicizing and keeping the history alive. That'd be nice. The, uh, guys, a couple pieces of information from uh, the Council of Small Towns, cost, and uh, they're talking about uh, Pequot and Mohegan funding and tolls and bond package and affordable housing and bottle bill. Real reason I gave it to you is for page three, just to so you can see the gambling revenue uh, to Connecticut, uh, uh, the lottery. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, the lottery provides $370 million worth of, of revenue to the state. Uh, Off-track betting, $3 million. Foxwoods uh, provides $113 million. Mohegan Sun, $142 million. The total casino amount is $255,000. Uh, $255 million. Um, it's you know, significantly less than what it used to be. Uh, the other thing is, is you know, way back when, when uh, if uh, there was the sharing with the towns, the amount of money was very significant. I think it's dropped off the table for East Granby. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Is there any idea how that ends up in East Granby? Uh, it's been uh, cut back uh, the last couple of years, and I really do think, if I remember correctly, that it's at you know, $900 That's or That's what I thought I saw. Yeah. yeah, it's on the treasurer's report somewhere. Yeah. Now, wasn't that originally targeted for specific things, or did it just end up kind I'm of not an expert on it, but uh, my understanding is that it was for... Uh, it was supposed to be for uh, funding for education, if I originally, if I remember correctly, John. Yeah. You? I know that the law was set up that, that way, that all the money was supposed to go towards education, but I have no idea what they're doing with it now. No diverting idea. it more than likely in the general fund and hmm. typical business as usual there. Also, uh, the, uh, the, there was an information I got from the uh, the citizens campaign for the environment that's uh, as a coalition uh, looking for support of modernizing Connecticut's bottle bill. I'm not looking to do that at this point. I just wanted to provide the information to you. They um, also got some sizable uh, sizable email from MDC re basically reacting to the public reaction to their 14% increase uh, and they go through and killed a lot of trees uh, with all the different things and talked about the Clean Water Act and surcharges and contaminated uh, groundwater and, and uh, uh, different things that they've been working with deep on and uh, it was a significant amount of information. Is it just me, or are you also getting emails almost every other day from MDC about something? Correct. And that seems to be something new, at least for me, where... I don't get any of those. You don't? 
No. The, well, I don't get any, I don't have MDC water, but I mean here at the office, we've been getting a lot of contact from them uh, regarding, you know, meetings that they're having or agendas that, that, that are being posted. Uh, at least once a week I get an email similar to this. But you saw so at the house you're getting it? No, I'm getting it through the town email that I have, but I didn't know if you were sending that to me or forwarding it or they were sending it. seemed like it was coming directly from MDC. Yeah, I don't think it was me. I mean, I, I know if, I, if you have yeah, it. I wouldn't because be Because I, I always forward it right. things to both, both of them. Okay. You know, they give you all these excuses, yet they don't show you anything about what they're doing to try to cut costs in, the, in their own overhead. Remember like last time? They had three high-paid people come in here to tell us that they're going to send our bills every single month. Yes, instead of it's quarterly. Like, yeah. Right. They could have. They could have just put it in your bill, telling you that. That's true. The uh, just made you aware of the fact that uh, the uh, per. Uh, Request of the Board of Finance, uh, the auditor needed, uh, and the Board of Education, the auditors uh, needed to ask for an extension for the audit uh, through February. And uh, the Board of Finance meeting last night, they indicated that there that there should be resolution on everything prior to February, so that we can uh, submit everything that needs to be submitted and do the reports that need to be done. Is the town treasurer on, on track with that? Does she concur that it looks like it will be done? Yes. Okay. You uh, hold your breath, John, and it's not over till it's over. And, All right, because uh, it's like we got one extension and another extension. It's like we're fast approaching a third extension. Well, they, no, they, they, um, I'm pretty confident to tell you that it, that's not going to happen. Okay. The uh, Board of uh, Education, as you know, has done an awful lot of work to try to get this resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, gave you a schematic of a, the veteran sidewalk that the veterans group has talked to us about. Um, so basically, uh, if you take a look at the picture, uh, this would come off of the Ambulance Association parking lot, well, our parking lot, but by the ambulance building. And um, the um, uh, so the, the rocks are there already, and the stone is there already, uh, and on the rocks, the large, the large boulders, uh, it will be uh, plaques that will uh, say, you know, Marines, Army, and identify all the services. And, uh, and uh, then uh, what they're looking for is a bench and pavers, and um, as I mentioned in, in the cover, the uh, uh, the plaques are ordered, uh, so those will go on the big rocks. Uh, for ease of access, the sidewalk will come into uh, to the ambulance parking lot, keeping in mind that uh, some folks that may be in, uh, in uh, wheelchairs might, might want to see that, and uh, so this will be ADA uh, compliant. Uh, the, uh, there's a big in town. Uh, and uh, at the appropriate time, we'll, we'll name it. Uh, uh, but he is, uh, this is what he does, and he's going to donate the labor. So, uh, uh, and, and then uh, DPW will do some work uh, to, uh, you know, backhoe work, uh, depending if they can get all their things together. Uh, that would be sometime in mid March. The veterans group is looking actively looking for a donation of materials, uh, financial donations from defense related businesses in town so that uh, this work could be done prior to Memorial Day. So uh, the, also the, uh, the group is uh, considering offering the granite pavers uh, for sale to residents for them to get uh, engraved and that would be another way of raising funds to offset the cost. Now, Jim, where is the gazebo relative to this? Is it, is it, it? It's not like right next to it, is it? No, no. Uh, so if, you know, so the ambulance building here. Right. Town hall here. Right. And the... Uh, I mean, this... A hundred plus feet away is... And the gazebo is way over here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure you're not moving the gazebo. No, <laughs> no. So, I mean, this is volunteers that have come and, and have worked with us on this, uh, and so uh, we look like we're close to fruition. They've got a plan that all of them can agree on. It's something that I think will be attractive, and 
We certainly encourage them in their efforts to fundraise and we'll assist them with in-kind services, whatever we can do. Okay. The, uh, uh, also another email from, um, see, uh, from cost rather on uh, uh, the uh, uh, efforts to repeal the municipal preemption, uh, which uh, is uh, there's pressure by environmental organizations uh, to uh, adopt individual ordinances and instead of ha on pesticides that are used to eradicate insects and rodents to maintain the safety of playing fields. Uh, basically what they want to do is they want to have 169 rules is what it comes down to. It certainly doesn't seem like it, it would be something that's beneficial and cost is going to continue not to, uh, uh, to uh, endorse that, mm -hmm. that would continue to oppose efforts to repeal the environmental pesticide preemption. Yeah, we don't need any more regulations. We've got enough already. I agree. Uh, also gave you another thing from cost regarding Senator Austin, Austin's bill to legalize sports betting in Connecticut. Uh, and they asked for cost to uh, endorse that and cost really did not endorse that like a neutral stance. And uh, also COST has developed some uh, draft uh, suggestions and legislation on stormwater management requirements uh, to help assist municipalities in complying with MS4. Uh, and um, this is just a draft that we have, but again, I wanted to let you know that what they're working on. How'd I do, John? Seems to have checked off all. We have a comment at the end, like he had another one to add. <laughs> Nothing else to add. Uh, okay, uh, next would be the minutes of January 21st, which are a special meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, unanimous. As presented. And then January 22nd, which was our regular meeting. Make a motion to approve. And I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, uh, old business, uh, tax incentives. We had a little information at our last meeting. We'll get more at upcoming <coughs> meetings. We don't have anything new for you right now. School town building is five uh, is old business 5B. Uh, and the school town building committee updates. Uh, the uh, all grove is complete and is in the process of being closed out. Um, to, with the state and with the Board of Ed and the uh, uh, middle school, high school is almost finished. Uh, just very few things remaining. Uh, and um, the public safety building is complete uh, with the exception of where the carpentry was uh, when climate allows, that'll be painted. And there's um, um, Ray Carlson who is our, our building su uh, supervisor uh, has done a punch list with uh, the consultant, uh, Roger uh, LaFleur, uh, La and uh, we're in the process of buttoning that up. So. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's been a big project and a lot of work. The only thing that's left right is the um, ventilation in the South End Firehouse, or is that, that done? No, that's not done, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. South End, uh, it's scheduled to be done, but it's not done. Uh, and uh, I asked Ed Hover to take a look at the level of uh, insulation there in case we need to go to Home Depot, and get some bags, right. and get to the machine. Yeah, I mean, we'll pay for it either in insulation or we'll pay for it in propane, so. Okay, uh, getting into new business, the, uh, I want to uh, continue to highlight, and I, all three of us agree, that we uh, need to encourage and develop uh, more economic development in town, and so it will make it a part of our agenda 
it'll be going forward, it'll be uh, under old business, so we'll always have something to discuss or update so that we can continue to keep the focus on. Um, the. Uh, uh, just to let you know some of the things that are going on. Uh, there's a, um, a business in town, a manufacturer in town that is looking for an expansion this year. It'll be a $4 million addition with six to $8 million worth of equipment. Uh, Cirque is helping us with that. Um, the, uh, in the um, upcoming budget of which we'll start to take a look at, uh, the budget uh, for uh, FY21 increases the boots on the ground coverage in any scramby from seven hours to 14 hours. Jim, can we just go back to that manufacturer there? In the Board of Finance meeting yesterday, Mary Ellen was describing the exemptions for manufacturing and she was describing the exemptions for the uh, trucks. Am I correct in understanding that for the trucks, the exemption is for five years, but there is no limit on the exemption for manufacturers? Yeah, and it gets even a little bit, you're, you're right on both. And then just to add one more thing to it, the Bradley Development Zone, where they get 80% reduction in taxes uh, over five year period, has got a sunset at five years. So you have three different components of that. So out of that expansion by Barnes, what would be the benefit to the town? The immediate benefit is uh, thriving business, employees being hired. They're looking for you know, 40 or 50 additional employees when they're all done. We have to wait five years for the tax benefit. Okay. And, and we won't ever get... Uh, the benefit from the manufacturers, ex things that are exempt right now. And if, it, if they own a big truck, uh, we will, after five years, we'll get the benefit. Okay. I, I guess I, I'm mentioning that just because the next subject that you were going to go into was the hiring of the boots on the ground. And in terms of that position and what that person will be doing, we just need, need to make sure that we have a clear target for that person. And in terms of economic development, that's going to be most beneficial to the town. We want to make sure that that's identified and that's the focus. The last time the person came in and seemed to focus a lot on the manufacturing community, and that's fine and I understand that. Just want to make sure that we're also taking a look at areas that will give us the most tax revenue as well. And this being a case where, you know, here's somebody and, and it all looks good and I understand the grand list, there was growth um, <clears throat> in certain areas, but as far as uh, building the tax base and the tax revenue, the exemptions do come into play, so we want that to be part of it. Absolutely, it's got to be broad. <coughs> uh, you know, and the other thing that's uh, important uh, is that in this particular case, the, uh, you know, the previous holder of the position, uh, certainly spent an awful lot of time with manufacturers, but he also uh, was working the brokers and he was working with um, the uh, landowners. So all of that has to happen. Yes. But, you know, uh, manufacturing long term uh, is, you know, good for the town, but from a tax purpose, it's got to be more broad than that. You yes. know, let's go for areas that we can get some tax revenue from. Yeah, and, and, and looking at the vacant buildings and the available space and buildings, it would seem that that would probably be right near the top to fill what we've got available, especially in ways that, again, produce the most tax revenue. And he, uh, uh, the previous uh, holder of the position, uh, spent a, a, a lot of time trying to fill the stuff up building. I think, I think the biggest bang for our buck would be to actually have some of the parcels develop because we right. have for sale and for lease signs that almost have trees growing out of them. They've been there so long and absolutely nothing's happened. It's like once you put up a building, you're going to start collecting taxes on it. You may have a partial exemption if it's within the development zone or, you know, specifically for some, like, aviation-related deals. But once it's there, tax keeps coming in, even the old StubHub building. I mean, we're still collecting taxes on the building even though it's empty. Right. So. 
The, uh, and, and the parcel development is certainly something that, that is an opportunity for us. The flip side of that is you've got to have uh, two parties that want to, right. one to buy it and the other to, to sell it. And uh, the prices are pretty, uh, pretty high based on what the brokers are saying. Now, we have the money for the village district uh, plan, yes. and that was available, right? That was available July 1st. Um, I, I'm still much in favor of that. I also wouldn't object to some of that, if possible, being used to have whoever does that come up with an overall plan for East Scramby, identifying catalysts and things that might spur, you know, to the point that John's making, what will make some of these buildings more attractive, what could we do that might... Uh, um, bring some people in here so that when you say it takes two parties, we've got a little bit more going that might ge generate some synergy. But I, I, I think that that should be moved up as soon as possible so we can use that money to facilitate some type of plan, including the village district and maybe identifying some overall ideas. And uh, well, going forward right now, the <coughs> center plan and zoning is implementing the regulation changes per the plan of conservation development. I mentioned that, you know, the business retention and, uh, and economic development of the economic development officer. Um, the, uh, uh, I've started to attend and will continue to attend yes. all the economic development commission meetings and try to focus on what our policy is and where we want to go and what the direction is. And that's very beneficial. I was at that meeting as well and having you there and um, I noted that you gave them a bunch of suggestions and that type of thing as well, so certainly the spotlight is on that now. It, it, I mean, it always has been, but more so now. John, is, uh, besides the parcel development, is there anything else? That well, I just think that we should have someone in town that's a full-time employee that takes at least some initiative or control over continuation of everything because these part-time people they're not going to be here forever mm -hmm. it's like even the last person yeah he worked out great I mean he didn't bring anything in specifically but he maintained a good business relationship with current business owners but yeah, and those, and those are like temporary positions well, in, in fairness to him uh, the uh, or anybody in that position uh, it could take you know a year or two years or three years before those efforts show some fruition. That's just the way the, the, the market, the marketplace is. Uh, but absolutely, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we want to put as many hours in as possible. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll, you know, when we get into the budget, we can talk a little bit more about that. But uh, certainly, uh, the community development director at this point is, is uh, in addition to having the economic development hat on, uh, is, uh, you know, got staff for planning and zoning and staff for wetlands. So to have, uh, at least at this point, a part-timer that we could evolve into something different uh, gives us the consistency that we haven't had. And that's what we saw with the last person that left in November is, is all of a sudden we just had consistent phone calls, consistent uh, meetings, consistency uh, on business retention, but also on you know working the brokers to see what we can do to help our landowners. I mean, I'm, not, I'm looking at not even just brokers. It's like you know contact specific businesses like specific grocery stores or pharmacies or dry cleaners or any kind of business like that and ask them how come they're not looking at East Granby or hotel chains. It's like we're so close to the airport. It's like if you call one a week, maybe at the end of the year you'll have someone that's really interested in looking at a parcel. We don't have anybody doing that right now. Yeah. Everybody's just waiting for someone to call us and say, hey, do you got a spot for a hotel or well, you got a spot for a grocery a store? Uh, I, need, I think we need someone that's in here 24, or, you know, eight hours a day, yeah. John, are, are you moving towards a full-time person? No, or? I think we have a community director. I mean, a development coordinating director, so we should have that person do, doing a little bit of that. 
okay. every single week, even if it's just one hour a week. There, uh, in the three months ago, it's been a little time now, but three months ago, I could have said to you that we had several phone calls with a small grocery store. But have have we called them, or did no, they call no, us? No, we called them. Okay. So some of that does happen, not as much as, as we want to have happen, and not as much as we need to have happen. I think we should have something like, you know, maybe once a week or a minimum once a month, they can make one phone call somewhere. Well, if we don't do that, nothing's going to happen. Well, that's part of what we were discussing at the, uh, Joe attended to at the uh, Economic Development Commission as we, we discussed some of those things. I mean, I'm looking at this posting that you have, and it seems like you're going to have the guy filled up doing a lot of stuff that's not going to be actively outgoing, looking for business. It's just going to be back office work, filling out paperwork that no, it'll be, I don't know. If, you, you, got I mean, I'm looking at all the you know, I mean, 18, well, we, pay, you know, 18 line items of duties for the guy. But you know, that's that's something that will be customized to the individual you know, based on the feedback that we're talking about of what our focus is. What is it that is East Granby? What is it that we want to do to get people to come to East Granby? And what do we have to do to the people that own property in East Granby to put them together? <laughs> And we are, I, I thought we made good progress on starting to get that. Yeah, I, I agree. It, and I think what's happening is that we're, we're looking at it from a different perspective now. And um, I, I think there was activity and some effort. But I think when Kevin came in, he also brought with him some of his experience, which we learned from as well. Uh, but I, I, I do think that we're on the, the track now to determine what exactly we need to do and to have this person come in and hit the ground running rather than to try this or try that and, and what have you. Um, and I think the Economic Development Commission is probably uh, a really good group of people that we now have group, on board. The best group that, well, that we've had John and I were on it at one time, so I was a little <laughs> apprehensive about saying that. <laughs> but it is a very, very good group of people with a great deal of experience in different areas. We have Leslie, who's the uh, president of the Jason. chamber, who brings the small business perspective. You have Bill, who uh, was involved in manufacturing for years at a very high level. Uh, Paul himself was a business owner as well. And then you've got David, who comes from the, uh, the banking side, dealing with all of the businesses and helping the, uh, the businesses uh, do what they need to do. It's just a matter of harnessing that and getting somebody who can now spend a good chunk of time uh, putting all of this into action. So I agree with you, John, that we definitely want that person to be the person who uh, is out making the calls and doing the things that need to be done as opposed to preparing reports and all of this. But there are things that still need to be identified. I mean, what makes East Granby attractive? We can sit here and rattle off some things, but when you have to give your elevator speech, you really have to make sure you've got everything laid out. And you know, you, you mentioned the airport, you mentioned the proximity to Springfield and Hartford, Boston and New York. Um, there's a lot of things that East Granby has going for it. And, and in addition to reasonable housing and a good safe community, so companies can have their people locate very close. It's not like you're going to have a company here and people are going to be working elsewhere. There's there's a lot that we have to offer. And I think we have to be able to articulate that very well. Agreed. So, more to come. So, Jim, this uh, job posting position or whatever here, is this already out? Or is this... Yes. Okay, because there's typos, but... I guess well, it's the, too late. Uh, the posting is out. The, uh, this is not, not. Okay. That's, well, I'll that's, show you a typo later. And that's that's for internal use. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, next order of business is tax refunds. And uh, let's see. Got one for fifty-one dollars and eighty-two cents. Got one for three thousand nine hundred seventy-four dollars, which was an escrow overpayment. Um, the uh, a nineteen dollars uh, and five cent refund, which uh, the person forgot that they had a credit from a previous year, 
uh, not well, it's an individual that filed on behalf of that company, but the company uh, didn't know they had a credit or forgot they had a credit. Uh, one for one million, one million, <laughs> eighteen hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, a motor vehicle, motor home. The assessment was reduced. And uh, let's see, uh, the uh, one hundred and twenty dollars and sixty-seven cents. The vehicle was registered in the new state, and the same person with the second car, same situation. And the last one is. Uh, is uh, thirty-six dollars and seventy cents, and the assessor it was an assessor credit. The registration was canceled. Make a motion to approve the refunds. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Uh, next order of new business is the Mira Trash Authority statement of interest. So as we talked before, uh, Mira has been directed by the legislature to redevelop the South Meadows Waste Energy Plant. Um, the latest plan uh, based on the state legislation that authorized SRT to uh, award the RFP to them and then they were told, to, uh, Mira was told to work with them. Uh, they've come up with a uh, cost, uh, an all-in cost of $330 million, which they propose as a 30-year solution. Um, it, uh, if you go to the non-binding informational statement of interest that they're asking us to act upon, it, uh, the, what it is is the, it's, uh, would be a tip fee on the $330 million project uh, is would be $145 a ton. Currently, uh, we're at $83 a ton, and we will be at $91 a ton in July 1. Um, the, um, uh, the tipping fee includes the cost of recycling and the socialized cost of the transfer station, and what that means is we're a direct haul town because we're close to the, the South Meadows. There are towns that are 30 miles away that pay the same tipping fee that we do, and uh, they uh, um, you know, there's trucking involved, so all of the 50 communities are absorbing the, the that's why they call it socialized, are, are, are absorbing the entire cost. Um, for planning purposes, this approach is assumed to continue in the redevelopment project. Uh, the MSW tip fee would be adjusted annually upon a COLA or a change of cost of living uh, or a change of law, if any, um, or any other exceptional mirror assumed risk. Uh, something uh, force majeure happened like it did a couple uh, a year and a half ago where um, uh, most of that was covered by insurance but again that will allow the tip fee to be revisited. Um, it also may be adjusted downward based on the actual cost established in an annual budget. It would remain the way it is now which is the final cost of operation. Um, and so they're asking us conceptual agreement with these terms and potential uh, interest in the project. And then uh, and we'll get into discussion in a second. And then um, question two is a 30-year agreement. 30-year commitment of waste with no opt-out provisions is necessary to support the bonding. I would uh, remind everybody that in 1988, uh, when the current project was developed, that, that was the criteria. Uh, and it actually, they, they say that this says, uh, 1988 ahead of me before that because it was in 2010. You were here when we went through the last uh, 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 municipal service agreement. From, uh, I'm not sure of that. And I, I, I would think it was about 2013 or 2014, 2013 or 2014. But anyway, I, mean, I was here then, but. Yeah. The, but regardless of that, the. Um, uh, the, you know, the previous project was the good faith and credit of the uh, at the time, 70 towns. So, uh, and, and those are the two questions plus uh, comments or questions. Uh, my um, my feedback on this is uh, it's $145 a ton is a lot of money, uh, and uh, there you know, would be other options that are not necessarily as environmentally friendly as this is. Uh, but there are certainly other options, like taking it you know, to another state. Uh, For $70 a ton on rail. $70, $90 a 
right. you know what it is. I think. Uh, so there's there's certainly other options. So if the state of Connecticut wants to maintain its environmental policy, then they need to do something to get the $350 million price down uh, or $350 million, uh, $330 million price of the project down or figure out ways to, uh, you know, whether it's state bonding or whatever, but how to help towns so that the $330 million uh, isn't strictly borne by the towns, that it be borne by the state too. This is a, a you know, it, this covers one third of the trash in the Connecticut. Uh, but, but the towns and the state are basically the same people. It's the same people paying it. They're either going to pay it per ton or you're going to pay it in bonding fees or whatever over the course of 30 years. So I think this is just a complete waste of time. We should start looking at the rail project. $145 a ton is basically a no-go. We can't go with that. I mean... Well, and I don't disagree. I don't disagree. My, I, 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 uh, I would, my recommendation would be to say no. Right. That's my and recommendation. I also would say to, for those watching uh, and for our audience, uh, I am on the Mirror Board of Directors. And I was just looking to see what I'm on because they have so many acronyms I can't keep up with them. <laughs> Do you remember the acronym of the group I belong to, which is the consortium of towns that work independent of Mirror to? Yes, yeah, CSWA, Central C Connecticut Solid Waste Authority. Thanks. Which okay. was established through Prague back in 2013 so that they went out to bid and everything and did all the due diligence so that the individual towns didn't have to incur the expense. Now, in our last meeting, the conversation was going along with this was intended to give them the ability to go to the legislature and explore ways of getting the tipping fees down to 90 or $95 as opposed to what's there. That would be the worst case scenario. So when the presentation was made to us, it was we'd like to send this letter out, we need to move because this is short session. And if we can get a non-binding commitment from the towns that they'd be interested in this, we would go to the legislature and see what can be done to reduce that down to 90 or $95. The other part of the conversation is that while it would seem that using rail or whatever to dispose of this, that ultimately that's going to create problems down the road and it's not going to be a long-term solution to it because eventually they're going to have to ship it someplace else and we're going to end up in the same situation where people are going to start refusing it and unless we have some type of plan or alternate here um, we're going to be stuck so I, I was leaning in favor of that just so that Mira can go to the legislature and say Here's what we're proposing. What can we do to bring the tipping fee down to a reasonable amount? But they're not really going to bring the tip, the overall cost down. They may bring the tipping fee down, but just take that cost and transfer it into bonds or something else. I, we're I, all gonna pay, still going to pay 145. And the current net. the current rate, John, just towards your point, the current rate is subsidized by the electricity that is right, which they're only getting two cents a kilowatt hour on. Uh, the, uh, the well, it's not, nothing to write home about. Right. It, the average you three and a half cents. Is it okay? But, but anyway, so they had not worth an argument. I mean, you uh, got something with the steam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I understand the point that it's you're going to pay for it one way or the other. I was just hoping to see this play out and see what alternatives, because it isn't a binding agreement that we're signing it. Signing it just allows them to move forward and explore other opportunities. Well, I think it's pretty decisive uh, if we agreed. Uh, it's, it'd be pretty decisive to say no, not 145. So it has the same effect. It says no, the plan's not going to work. Uh, and so Mira, you know, would then go to the deep and the governor's office and legislature and say we don't have enough commitment of tonnage to make this feasible. So, I mean, so then where are you going after that? Well, um, the they, they, people way above your and my uh, pay grade uh, need to, to make uh, a, a decision on what the comprehensive policy is to 
part of why we've got this difficulty is there's not a, a comprehensive statewide environmental policy anymore, and they they need to take the leadership on this. The trash, you know, the trash removal is fine until it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden you've got huge issues, and you you, know, you uh, uh, end up throwing money at it like happened a year and a half ago. So the, uh, at, at this point, um, you know, my thought process is this: is that uh, we it's $145 a ton a year. About hey, we'll figure out how to get it down to 90.95. Well, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Um, there's not even any guarantee that the 145 is right. I mean, I I was just there the other day. The place is in horrible shape. It's an environmental disaster. They're going to spend millions or billions of dollars trying to clean that place up. There's, there are um, certainly, uh, there's a need five years ago, ten years ago, for a new way to handle it, mm -hmm. for sure. And they, it's obsolete, and it's, uh, and they put millions and millions of dollars into capital just to keep the family wire and, and the children come on. Right. So if we tell them to start looking at this, it's not going to get any better. All they're going to do is shift the cost to make it look like it's cheaper, but we're still going to pay for the, well, the entire it, amount, if that, not that more. Would, that would support the overall, overarching state environmental policy. <clears throat> so it's, if the state decided we're not going to, like they did 35 years ago, we're not going to bury stuff in the ground anymore. And so then they came up with a system, and the system worked. It was actually a great, uh, uh, great example of shared service. Well, they're still burying ash. Yes, Everything that comes out of there, I was watching the trucks pull out, yeah. one there after is, another. There is no ash landfill, so they have to shut up. So what are we doing? So uh, it's funny that you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do we? Uh, so the first question is, do we support the hundred and forty-five dollar ton or not? And then the second aspect of this is, do we do a thirty-year commitment? Well. If we are not going to do number one, then we're not doing number two. I probably could have phrased that more delicately. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, anyways, uh, if there is a motion that someone would like to make, if we've had, uh, uh, and we can have more further discussion, but if someone wants to make a motion, um, what would that be? I'll make a motion not to support the hundred forty-five dollar a ton. That's just outrageously expensive. We've got other options. We should start looking at them. Okay. And this is this is just a base number. I mean, it can probably it's probably going to be a lot worse than that. That three hundred thirty million dollars. I think that's optimistic. Um, um, Based on, on all the things that have been like engineering and the vetting by Sasser Rooney and all these things, they're pretty comfortable with the number drop. But, you know. I don't think there was ever a single project like this that's ever been on budget well, and on time. The other one that actually was, I think. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you will either second or should I second? You can second. Okay. I will second that. So that we can any further discussion, or do we want to go to a vote? I'm good with voting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And you, you wanted to give Mira a chance to... I wanted to give Mira a chance, out. right, and see what they could come up with. I don't view that as agreeing to $145. I view that as giving him an opportunity to explore what will get that amount down in whatever way. And uh, I think it would just be another option that we would be able to take a look at. But um, I understand your point of view as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I certainly understand yours. I just think it gives false optimism to yeah. Mira on you something could. that I don't see uh, uh, without state intervention that, that would ever get down to 95. I mean, even with state intervention, we're still paying for it. Yes. The whole 145 and are you or more. Are you paying a lot of bonding? Are you paying a lot of taxes? Are you paying a lot of increased electricity costs? All the above. Okay. My uh, apologies for giving you the FY21 first pass budget. Uh, and, you know,
not in a timely fashion. Uh, just before we get into this discussion, uh, which will be admittedly brief, so that you can have a chance to look at it at your leisure, or we can just do that. that another yeah, day. I think we're going to need to because it's like oh, this is a lot of paper. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, so we have two meetings prior to the Board of Finance on March 17th. Um, so uh, we uh, could always slide a meeting in on March 4th. So our next meeting is February 26th. And then uh, after the 26th, we are uh, March 11th. So we could do the 26th. Uh, we could do a special meeting on March 4th, uh, budget only, and then do our regular meeting on March 11th, which would give us enough time to button up the budget to uh, present it to the Board of Finance on March 17th. I think that's what we should do. I think, you know, give give us, give me at least a day or two to go through this, look it over. And, and there'll be more changes that'll come down and I'll, I'll, I'll email out to you and everything. So what are those dates again? Uh, so we uh, our regular scheduled meeting, Joe, is February 26th. And then our, uh, we would have a special meeting on March 4th. And then we would have our regular meeting March 4th. Okay, so the special one we can probably assign a different time if we want to or whatever. Yeah. We can decide that. I got to look at my calendar at home. Okay, if you shoot me, you know, both of you shoot me your availability on March 4th. Right, I got to make sure something else isn't going on. I don't think so, but. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. I purposely right. stand on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, let me know what works for you because I'm pretty flexible on that day. Okay. I mean, in case we need to want to do it earlier or whatever. Or yeah, that's fine. Okay. The direction from the Board of Finance was to uh, submit a budget at 2%. Okay. And that, and that would all go towards a tax increase because there's no growth in this town. The grant list did not increase that side. There is uh, some uh, four or $500,000 more in cash than what was anticipated. Uh, so there is some uh, cash oh. offset, but there, the grant list offset is not. Right. But we have a little more in the way of bond payments too, so. In two years. Yeah. Nothing extra this year? Well, uh, bond anticipation bill, but it'll right. be the same as the current year. Okay. But it's the, it's the next year out after that that the whole bond will hit. Right. All right. Um, public comment. Mr. Calabon. I haven't been here in a while, so. I haven't Good seen you in a while. <laughs> um, I thought you were all in Arizona or down in Florida or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to Florida a lot. A um, couple of things. The the Board of Education review, audit, if, if they don't complete that in time, is that going to affect us adopting a, a town budget? The, the uh, failure to... Uh, the failure to have the audit complete uh, would not uh, affect the ability to do a town budget. Okay, so there's, you, you don't have to have your last fiscal year's budget to do the next one in, in, in order before you adopt a new town. First of all, I think it's going to happen, but before the end of this month. So I think the point is moved. But I, to answer your question, is I don't think you. you I, I think you can still pass a budget. They're, they're planning on completing it Friday. I'm sure that we can still pass the budget. I am sure. Okay. So, so it, it, I know they've hired a couple of consultants to assist there. So, but the fact that they missed this last extension and they're asking for another one seems very concerning. Um, there's, a, there's, a, you never, uh, you never can be sure until you get the paperwork is dry and the signatures are dry and the paperwork's on its way. Uh, but uh, based on all the information, John, from a Board of Education perspective, I'm sure can, can, can attest to this, that they're on track and it's written, anticipating that they will be able to finish before the end of the month. Our auditor is, is already been working with them and I believe he's going to work with them again on Friday. They've talked everything up, the auditor, his work next week, so it should be completed barring any unforeseen issues at this point, of which they don't happen to see any coming. Um, it should be complete within 10 days, 10, 12 days. So, so what is your feeling of what's going to be the result of the audit? What's the expectation? Is there going to be a, a shortfall? No. no. 
there is not any cash shortfall. Another thing I read was there's something going on at Brignall. They're applying for some variances or something to do with something with their property, and that was going to be a closed meeting. I guess why is that? Well, uh, you're asking the wrong board. It's the plan of the zoning commission that would have the answer to that because that oh, is. Can I plan, what are the rules for planning and zoning? They're the same as they are for everybody else. So I'm not sure I understand what that, you know, it's. They I'm, said I'm, it was not open to the public. The discussion on their application for whatever it is, because they didn't get into describing what it was, was going to be a non-public meeting. So, I, so they have the authority. I, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. John, could you do me a favor? Sure. Go to the bulletin board and take the plan of the zoning. It's on the uh, agenda. Okay. No, it's on the agenda. Yeah. I, 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 I wanted to. I know. Okay. Be right back. I guess I'm just shocked that they can have a, a, a private. Well, I'm not sure that's accurate. Oh, okay. Well, I'm pretty sure I read it correctly. But uh, the, uh, that, that's why I'm bringing it up is because, uh, again, it would be sh shocking to me, too. And then on these, the stop signs, so you're saying we're going to, on Spoonville, we're, we're going to get the data from the officer because it is on the 90-day review cycle is, is coming up here, and we said that if it didn't show any marked improvement, that we'd be taking it out. So this new letter that you got won't have any impact. No correlation to No correlation to that stop sign. Okay. Are we going to do another study about the new stop sign? Certainly, we'll, we'll do some police investigation and some data on that. But I mean, we do that everywhere. It's, it won't well, wouldn't the inspired. investigation be the same data from the same radar recorder that we already have? Or, or visual inspection. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, let me take a look at this. We, uh, so, by the way, the, you know, pencil it in on your calendar. Tomorrow is the planning zoning meeting. Get, the get, read what it says about Brignall. And it says. Uh, uh, um, old business uh, 5E Timothy Brignall revised site plan on uh, Hartford Avenue received uh, on February, I'm sorry, received uh, December 10th. And it looks like the discussion may be continued to March 10th. That, uh, that is, yeah. again, uh, that would be a planning is only thing if you wanted to call the building department. Is, it, is that their agenda or is that? that no, that's their agenda. That's the posted agenda. Okay, so they postponed it. I, if I'm reading the, the There's no page. mention about that won't be open to the public. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that either their last minutes or that agenda said that particular item was not going to be open for public. I would certainly. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll go. It's tomorrow night. Is it here? It's tomorrow night here. I would certainly suggest that you know at uh, eight oh one you give a call to the building department here, who will be able to fill you in on whatever your questions are, get them answered. The only thing I can think of is maybe the public comment section of that may have been already closed out. That's but I'm not sure. That's very possible. That can that can happen too if you previously have discussed it. Right. Public comments that part. So, so you folks don't know what they're no, requesting. No, we're, we're, we're not involved in that at all. Planning and zoning uh, by state statute is uh, the sole arbiters of land use and the individual counts. The Board of Selectmen uh, uh, is uh, our reach does not go over to that area, but our interest does because it ties into economic development. And just one more last thing. Since you are on the board of here, you have to excuse yourself from any books that have to do with that. The contracts. Yeah, but this isn't a contract. This is a survey. It's a what? This is a survey. We, we act upon Oh, it's survey. a survey. Yeah. We act upon a survey. But a non if it survey. came to a voting item on this. I would get the town attorney's advice on that. Okay. Every other town and city that I've ever lived in, if you had a financial interest or you're on the board of a company, you had to excuse yourself from the vote, no matter if it was the mayor, 
for selecting the dinner. And I, I appreciate your comment. And, and uh, uh, let me assure you. It seems you, like it's a conflict of interest. I'm pretty me, sure the lawyer would say that too. <laughs> Also, why I always bring it up that I'm on, so that people understand that. Uh, so I'm being very transparent. The other thing is, I want to let you know, uh, with 250 percent vigor, there is no financial interest. <laughs> chief or uh, assistant chief, any comments? You will defer. Absolutely. Thank you for entertaining us. You're welcome. Glad that uh, we're looking for uh, realistic solutions for the ever present uh, trash problems. Okay, thank you very much. So I just uh, want to touch on a few things. Oh, I thought you said you were deferring. <laughs> uh, let's rephrase that. Just a few highlights then. Um, we're currently engaged in an officer training program that's set to commence in early May. I would like to extend an invitation to the Board of Selectmen to attend that uh, graduation uh, ceremony of the officers that graduate from that program. We would be delighted. I always attend those once I'm invited and always make it available. And what, what, what day is that? Because last time I wasn't available. It, it's, it's a uh, May 11th, and I think if I look at a calendar, that should be a Monday. It is May 11th, Monday. Uh, that could be a board of ed meeting. Board of ed, but uh, certainly, understand. Uh, certainly, uh, the board of selectmen will be represented. Uh, hopefully, Thank all you. three of us, but otherwise, at least one of us. That would be me. Absolutely. One of the things we need, we being the fire department, I think the board of selectmen and board of finance. I think we need to entertain a town ordinance on cost recovery. Um, in relationship to the fire department responses to incidents involving hazardous materials and the cleanup and the cost effect, the impact on those services that are rendered uh, by the fire department. We uh, we have briefly discussed that you and I. Uh, we haven't yes. uh, we haven't uh, gone any further to see if you've got any suggested uh, language or you know, then of course we'll take it to the town attorney. So Absolutely. and my point is that then we'll bring it before the yeah. board and then we can discuss. And, it. and with that said, we you and I had some brief discussions. On, we're in this funny time period with firefighting foam. We all know that it looks like that state will not charge us to recover the foam that is we'll call use the word contaminated with PFAS PFAS but we will not be reimbursed for the acquisition of that uh, material and that's going to have a direct impact in our uh, operating budget proposal for this uh, coming year um, and I think we have to look at those things of when we have incidences response to hazardous material incidences and we have a very high cost of operation at those instances because of things like firefighting foam and perishable equipment booms dikes pads even things such as speedy drive i think we really have to take a realistic look at that especially in light of the situation we have industrial development and we're i think we could say we're somewhat handicapped on the income derived from the taxes from those properties the other thing that i would like the selectmen to uh, become involved in is uh, public safety billing i think we're all happy with the direction the renovations are going in the uh, public safety building and certainly we're very happy with the uh, paint that's been applied to the apparatus floor. I think the next thing that I'd like the selectmen to be involved in is the reutilization of the fire chief's conference room by the fire department. Uh, we are absolutely strapped for space. We have six officers trying to work out of one uh, 
uh, one small office that I guess typically was uh, probably more designed as a receptionist area. Uh, we, we can't move in that office. We're out of space. I think everybody realizes that we've had a 25% or greater increase in the membership of the, of the fire department. And certainly that has a direct in, impact on not only budget preparation, but the HR end of it is becoming uh, tremendous. Um, we are going to have some uh, HR issues that um, I'll call them unfunded mandate that's going to create training costs to us. Um, on the other side of everything that's going on, we are looking at uh, sharing some services with other fire departments in our area to uh, get the greatest value um, with our training budget. Um, that's going to come, I think, before the Board of Selectmen and our operating budget. I would like to and look forward to working with the Board of Selectmen and probably through the Board of Selectmen to the Finance Board to take a very realistic look at our uh, budget uh, presentation this year. Uh, been clearly able to identify cost-saving measures that I think everybody's going to be surprised about that. We're actually going to have a cost-saving measure on a current service that we receive um, and that cost savings is only going, it will not only be a cost savings, but it will be in relationship to a, an enhanced service, not only to the fire department, to the town. The other side of that is as we move forward with this fire department, we are under, I'm going to use the word mandates from health and safety. We now have a cancer bill in the state of Connecticut, and we also have a post-traumatic stress uh, bill in uh, the state of Connecticut. And this fire department and the town has to get our arms around on how we track those and any potential cost. And then obviously the training that uh, is going to uh, go along with that. Um, half of me wants to say that the operating budget that we present, we would like the selectmen to take that budget and present that in, in entirety to the finance board so that we can start a conversation, a realistic conversation on what it's going to take to uh, maintain the fire department that we have now and what it's going to take to maintain the fire department for the next uh, five years. Because I think everybody in the fire department realizes that the fire department has evolved quite a bit in the past five years. And if we look forward the next five years, there's going to be quite a bit of more evolution in that. And I think that's one of the biggest driving factors is the, uh, the rapid growth of the airport and uh, you know, the economic benefit to that, but also the services that the fire department is rendering to people that you know, is easily get in uh, more vehicle accidents and the time we spend. And certainly we all know what we've spent um, on rescue equipment to respond uh, to that. Thank you for your comments. I'm sorry that I was long-winded. It's okay. You can't say hello in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I say that with friendship. Absolutely. Uh, our next uh, order of business is to move into executive session on personnel matters and ongoing litigation. There will not be any votes taken. When we come back out, we'll just adjourn. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, can I see you for a second? Yes, sir. Make a motion to adjourn, to, uh, to, to go to executive session. To to executive session. Thank you. So, At 753. 750, all those I should, I should, I should apologize because we don't.